Welcome back to this class on textile finishing. Let us look back as to what we had done till now. What we had learnt about was various types of cross-linking agents that can be used to give wrinkle resist finish. We also talked about different type of catalyst systems which are efficient in various senses, reduction of uh, let us say the loss in textile strength, you should be able to reduce the temperature of curing and so on so forth, we talked about them. We also talked about formaldehyde free finishing which means using agents, cross-linking agents which are free from formaldehyde, they do not have formaldehyde by themselves or we could also use some scavengers which could reduce the release of formaldehyde in the finished fabrics which is good for the user. Today we will talk about another finishing process which is called the stiff or a soft finish. So, this is a very interesting uh, area which is slightly different from what we had learned before. Here the purpose also is different although some of the things may sound similar. Let us say we first discuss as to what are we going to be doing in the coming weeks. So, in the couple of lectures what we will do is we will talk about the principle, the need for doing a stiff finish, any chemicals that are used which are sometimes called stiffeners, we will talk about them, how it can be achieved, what are we supposed to do. Similarly, in next lectures we will talk about soft finish how the fabrics can be made softer and so on and so forth, what kind of chemical softeners are used, what processes people use to give a softer handle. Today however, we shall concentrate on stiff finish. So, how to make fabric stiffer, appear stiffer. So, we say what does it mean, we will talk about it, we will also then understand how do we impart these properties onto textiles and approximately the mechanisms of course, wherever required we will use chemistry, but chemistry in this case we are not going to be dealing uh, in more detail, we most probably know already what we had discussed. So, important thing when we talk about stiffness is increasing resistance to bending, increasing resistance to bending. So, how do we increase resistance to bending? Where do we increase the resistance to bending? Let us say you are talking about some action to be taken at the intra fiber level, intra fiber level. If you do that, then hopefully you may see increase in bending rigidity or resistance to bending, right. So, do you recall anything? Whatever we have done in a previous lecture, do you think something like this can happen? Yeah. You think so or no? Yes, we have been talking about cross linking, we have been talking about cross linking before. And what is this cross linking? These cross links are intra fiber or intermolecular. So, in that way, if you remember we said that after cross linking treatment the stiffness of the fabric may increase. That means the rigidity, bending rigidity
can increase. So change is happening where? The change is happening within the fiber. So if you can do that, we have already done part of stiffening. If that was the aim, then we have achieved a bit of it. However, we need not, we need not change the bulk property to achieve a stiff experience. You remember, crease recovery, improvement, wrinkle resistant finish was a bulk treatment. That means you wanted all the molecules to diffuse into the fiber, reach at various molecules wherever possible to complete a cross-linking reaction. So that was change in bulk property. If you do this intra-fiber, then you are actually doing the change in a bulk property, changing the modulus, the bending modulus of the fiber. If fiber bending modulus changes, the yarn's bending modulus will change and the fabric's bending modulus will also be changed and one can see the stiffness happening. But in that finish, our aim was recovery from bending. But we may be interested in interfiber treatment, not intrafiber. That you may like to have some kind of a treatment which can change the fiber to fiber interaction, which would lead to what? It would lead to stiffness of the yarn, the bending rigidity of yarn. can change in case the interfiber interaction, interaction forces could be altered, modified. If you do the same thing in an inter yarn situation, then what would it mean? It would mean that we are changing the bending rigidity of the fabric. All right. That means based on what we do for increasing the resistance to bending, we can do it in the, in the fiber, in the yarn, in the fabric. So invariably, we may be interested in handling fabrics and changing the bending rigidity of the fabric to make it stiff. So how does this happen? Why would this happen? So one important thing is in the fiber case we are talking about intermolecular, in the yarn case we are talking about interfiber and inter yarn for the fabric case and you can actually have inter fabric also. That means you can have two layers of fabric. So and what do we change? We are talking about friction. One is a permanent bending or anything that you do which resists the motion, the bending is going to basically change the rigidity, bending moduli, moduli and so on and so forth. Now this in some sense is related to friction. If by any means you can increase the friction between the yarns, friction between the fabrics, friction between the fibers, you will see something happening to the bending rigidity. If you increase the friction, when it increases. Now what it means is, it means interestingly, it can change the handle of the fabric. Sometimes the handle is a term which people use in the textile. What it means is that you actually hold a fabric and try to squeeze and you feel the tactile you know, resistance 
to this bending and say, say, well, this is the hand of the fabric or the handle. The fabric handle is, you know, stiffer or softer. So that is what can change if you change the interfiber friction. Change means increase, not decrease. Now, very interestingly, this hand and the stiffness, etc., belong to what we call as a low deformation properties. What are we happening? So, let us say a fabric, you are bending. So, you have again the same extensive forces and compressive forces working and if these forces actually represent friction, then also there will be resistance. When we talk about low deformation means that the deformation is not very high. It is not like tensile strength or strength at break, elongation at break. You are looking at modulus. initial resistance to change, that will be interesting. So, that becomes an important part and interestingly therefore, things like thickness matter, if this instead of being this thick is more thick, you will have to probably apply much more force to bend it, thickness becomes an important thing. For example, let us say this is a paper, okay? it bends, it bends. I take two papers, together I hold them, they bend. I hold another paper. You know, three sets of papers, I hold them, they bend, all right. But if I do something different, I take the three papers and put some resistance to bending. How? By putting, let us say, a glue, okay. I put a glue, then you say it does not bend. Three papers with little bit of a glue, compare this with this, if I hold these two together, both of them are composed of three each. See this? The other three have bent as if they were single and once this becomes a composite, it obviously offers resistance to bending. So, what has happened? More important thing that has happened is that when we had no glue during bending, if any slippage is required, they could slip. The top one could slip and bend in its own ways. The bottom one would bend in its own ways, but they are not restricting each other. But the moment you find that the top one or the bottom one cannot independently move. The friction between them has increased. So, you see the bending rigidity also increases. So, there are still three same three papers. Now, this becomes therefore an interesting observation to say that this increase in stiffness may not have to change the bulk property. We may only modify surfaces and therefore, surface friction, well, it could bind permanently, it could bind temporarily, it could bind with a low force, it can bind with a greater force. That is different story altogether. But important thing is, if the interfiber movement, you see, the stiffness of this is more than this because for this to move, 
there has to be strain on almost all elements and so if you can bind them then obviously it will be there. You can increase the surface uh, friction this will change the bending. Therefore, in some sense if we say that we are not here to modify bulk property, but if we change the surface or do whatever to the surface inter fiber or inter yarn or inter fabric in this case that we showed was inter paper you know resistance to slip. If the elements are not allowed to slip then stiffness would increase. So, what do we do? Like I said I had done a glue, I used a glue between the three sheets of paper and therefore, a glue is like a chemical. So, you would require some chemical compounds which can be called as stiffeners you do some bonding whichever type of bonding they would do and at the end you will have the stiff fabric theoretically stiff yarn as well ok. If to get a stiff fiber obviously, you have to go in the bulk property chain which we may not be interested because this process of stiffness will be relatively simpler. If somebody asks this question is it possible to increase stiffness without use of chemicals? You think so? Is it possible? You think it is possible? Well, it is possible. We said about friction. Friction between the fibers between the yarns if you can increase by whichever way they want. Have you ever seen or felt or experienced if you dry a fabric after washing even line dry or let us say you dry to an extent in a good sunny environment and the most of the moisture has gone out. You will feel the fabric which otherwise appear to be quite soft is little stiffer all right, but you do a little shake and you will find well those small bondings which may have been there because of drying of the moisture are now gone and so it can work. So, over drying, over drying if you do for example, you do curing or drying to higher temperatures, higher time so that the fabric becomes a zero moisture again, comes to a zero moisture again condition. If that happens then you might find the fabric becomes stiff, but otherwise to help the cause we would require stiffeners. Some of the things which people have been using and you may have also experienced, you may have used it also are things like starch common one, dip a fabric in a dilute starch solution dry it and you suddenly find the fabric has become stiff. Of course, other such materials which are um, polymeric starch is also polymeric right or glue or other polymeric substances if you have solutions of them take the fabric through this dry it and suddenly find fabric becomes stiff. Why? Because you try to bend the different layers different fibers are not able to slip during bending and because they do not slip they offer resistance. So, this is remember again it is generally a change in the surfaces and not the bulk property of a fiber. So, if you can just handle the surfaces 
whichever way it can still work. Suppose these things as we say are film forming substances, so they do make film either in the surface or between the yarns or between the fibers, so some kind of film can be obtained. It does not have to be a film absolutely visible on the surface which can also happen based on the concentrations that you use. That means if we every time there is a film which is formed, does it mean that it will be stiffened? Yes, in general yes, but there is one caveat. It is related to glass transition temperature. So, when you talk about polymers, you talk about their products, you talk about glass transition temperature. What is the glass transition temperature? What is the glass transition temperature? So, glass transition temperature is approximately a temperature above which the material behaves like a rubber and below this behaves like a glass which means rigid body. So, the rigidity is linked with the glass transition temperature like the rubbers they have a glass time temperature below room temperature, some of them below 0 degrees also. Polyester for that matter as a fiber has a glass tension temperature around 80 or more degrees centigrade. So, at room temperature where we work, where we feel, where we look at the drape, where we look everything else, at that temperature, if this temperature is below the glass transition temperature of the film that is being formed then definitely you will see stiffness getting higher. So, what it means is higher is the Tg, higher would be the stiffness. However, there can be cases where the polymer Tg is much much below the room temperature. Therefore, it is already very soft, it is like rubbery. For example, if the glass and temperature is minus 10 degree centigrade and we are working at room temperature, it is very soft. In such a case and based on, in such a case and based on, let us say the quantity that has been applied, you may not see so much of a change in the, in the stiffness because whenever the bending forces are applied this polymer instead of resisting extends, it, it is malleable, it is ductile, so stiffness can be less. So, there is a possibility that you can actually have film forming substances applied to a textile and still may not increase the stiffness and we will see and later whenever is required to be discussed. So, as we said apply starch, saris, shirts, trousers made of cotton particularly, you apply starch, pad and dry obviously in conditions which are stressed out conditions, they remain as such. Of course, there will be always a situation when you bend it more. You Crease formation can be more because this film can break. But as long as you are not going to sharp bends, you are going for milder, smaller bends, then it will stay as a effective stiffening agent. So, they can be temporary. You give a next wash, the chemical has gone out, and when you do it again, apply again and use it. So, cheaper chemicals can be used as stiffeners without any problem. Little bit of permanency that you want to give to this stiff finish then probably cross linkable agents can be used. They do not have to be going and diffusing inside, but they themselves may be film forming, but 
the film can be cross-linked. If also at the same time between the film there is cross-linking and if some linkage can happen uh, with the fiber, the permanency can increase further. So uh, after every wash you still find, well, the material is still stiff, okay, because it could not be washed off, all right. So, some of these compounds which are called thermoset resins are in a way cross-linking type of resins. Have you heard of Bakelite? Have you heard of melamine, melmaware? You make utensils out of them, saucers, cups, so on and so forth. Sometimes they were known as unbreakable plastics. So thermosets are the ones which once they are formed, then they don't change because within the within the polymeric system they can make a lot of network. So we are looking at forming of intermolecular cross links. And that's intermolecular networking, right? So not just a cross link, we are looking at network formation. So you form networks and if you can form networks, then the rigidity of the film increases and by heat, by wash, it may not change much. So they could be trifunctional. You see, we remember cross-linking agent, normally we talked about bifunctional cross-linking agents. But they can only cross-link to molecular but, but they can't form network. So if we form, want to form a network in a three-dimensional system, so you got to have a cross-link there or a cross-link there in not two dimensions but in three dimensions. Molecule themselves, the film molecule themselves are cross-linking and so the film can be rigid and tough. So you can have various types of uh, agents which can be used uh, other than PVA. PVAs and uh, we talked about starch, glues and gelatins and so on and so forth which could be temporary. But if you use them and do the cross-linking there as well, by any means it could also become little more permanent than otherwise. So network based cross-linking with multifunctional agents can work out which we call sometimes a thermoset resins. They do not change their form by heating, reheating. The first you have the cross-linking reaction, after that they do not change their form. So melamine based, if you remember melamine for example, So lot of nitrogen here. So you can have uh, this type of a structure. This is, what is this? This is trimethylol 
melamine because the three functional groups it can form network type of cross link but you can theoretically replace this as well replace this as well replace this and if that happens h goes and you have a situation where every nitrogen has got two methylol groups if every nitrogen has got two methylol groups then it will be hexamethylol melamine looks as if we are still in the cross linking zone so you can have hexamethylol more networking trimethylol some networking and if this curing is allowed to be done then you can get permanent effects permanent stiffness in fabrics what do you do with the fabric is a different story but to get permanent effects you would require some kind of a chemical cross linking to be happening on the films and if it also reacts with the textile it is okay if it does not it still will be a very large molecule because it is cross linking with itself and making a three dimensional network if it makes a three dimensional network stiffness will increase then there are other compounds they call the epoxy resins epoxy based hardening systems which also can be used they are used for many other purposes but theoretically based on what you want to do this can also be done for example if you have uh, epichlorohydrin you remember epichlorohydrin what was this so it's an epoxy compound okay and you also have another compound called the bisphenol a i think you probably know this compound as well and a methyl group here so this becomes the bisphenol this a and this is epichlorohydrin okay so these compounds can react based on uh, molar ratios so if you have uh, different molar ratios different type of compounds and resins can be formed <clears throat> if suppose you have a situation where uh, epichlorohydrin happens to be you know in certain proportions so based on that you can get a polymeric substance also which will be let's say a bisphenol a may be more in in cases then then you will have a compound like this
can have n units of bisphenol A uh, reacted with on both sides maybe with our epichlorohydrin so some some epichlorohydrin may be on this side also and so you can get some oligomeric systems which can be used you can understand this this compound is a larger molecular weight based on n it could be 6 to 8 so large molecular weight but this whole complex can also be changed in different ways a molar ratios if they are changed so you can have more of this less of that it is possible instead of bisphenol you can have aliphatic alcohols therefore the flexibility of the film that the glass transition temperature of the film could be then changed and that manipulation can be done by changing the ratios of these two co monomers you may have heard of something called a cross linker being used in in this whole uh, game of uh, epoxy resin plus a cross linker sometimes these type of two kind of things are available and you apply one or just before applying you mix the two compounds and then apply so it takes some time even at room temperature the reaction can take place and becomes hard now so this cross linker obviously has a role to increase the stiffness of the film if you don't use cross linker at all then the stiffness will be very very low so based on the application you may use or use very less amount of thing and sometimes this is also called a hardener now these cross linkers are also called hardeners uh, some of them are secondary amines or amines which can react one of the interesting compound which you have studied before which also does the same role of a cross linking uh, is epimene you remember this compound so these are cross linking agents as we know they they were used previously also they can uh, link with hydroxyl groups they can link with uh, other groups let's say in this case if we have an epoxy group which we just saw in our pre polymer resin so this and this can react the ring will open and then what you will get is let's say you have r you have n CH2, so this will become NH and then CHOH and CH2 and so forth. So, you can make links and if they are cross links, so they will wherever there is a possibility of availability of an epoxy group, it will react with one compound with the other compound with third compound and so on and so forth and you can create a network so here also uh, we can produce a film which can be networked between the molecules and therefore a stiffer uh, fabric can be obtained now the how much stiff that you want you will depend on the add on a normal usage you may probably require very very less amount of these type of agents but if you are looking at applications which are different applications then you may 
use more amount of thing. Then this resin to hardener ratio will depend, they will decide the stiffness. As we said before that the aliphatic versus aromatic components, the ratio of these can also change the hardness. Similarly, here also one can use more or less or no hardener can also change the stiffness. Then there are other materials, polymeric material which are thermoplastics. Thermoplastic means they change their shape with heat. You apply heat, if they were in a creased form you can remove the crease, if they were plain you can push the crease and that can remain. So, you can set them and can change their position by reheating. In the previous case by reheating you could not change. So, some of these things like PVC you must have seen sometime textiles on one side you have a PVC uh, applied. So, if you apply a PVC you will find the whole thing become stiff. Of course, it gives different properties other than stiffness also, but these thermoplastic systems can be used. Uh, they can be used on the outside, one side, both sides, in between like polyethylene, polypropylene. Uh, they, they can be used in, in different ways uh, either laminates or uh, coatings. So they, they can change the stiffness of fabric which is interesting enough. But after you have made them you can shape them, reshape them and then again heat and you can get the new shape as well. Stiffness plus, plus molding. There is one very interesting stiffening finish which is uh, uh, very special to cotton fabrics, very fine cotton fabrics. Uh, they, they go through this process and the name of the finish was the organdy, organdy finish. This organdy finish uh, is based on a process called parchmentization. So, like you make a parchment paper which is little stiffer you do the same thing, similar thing uh, on a textile which is otherwise very strong, but it is a very interesting process and it is a very delicate process and it is very, very critical that you can control the parameters very nicely, otherwise things can be very uh, dicey. And what do we do? We do sulfuric acid treatment, you know in this thing you have a sulfuric acid. If you remember 75 percent weight by weight sulfuric acid aqueous can dissolve cotton, right. So, you are taking something like 2 is to 1 which means about 66 percent or so. So, it will not dissolve the cotton by itself, but it is concentrated enough to do a lot of damage, right. So, one important thing is it is concentrated, quite concentrated. Temperature should be low, as low as possible, room temperature is high, you can go for little lower temperatures if possible. You treat for a very short time and we talk about very short time, you are talking about something like seconds, you know, 4 to 5 seconds, that is the kind of treatment that you give. It is pretty concentrated and so you give this treatment and suddenly you say beautiful beautiful things happening, but immediately you must go for a thorough rinsing maybe several baths go through them and then obviously neutralize by whichever treatment that alkali you can use to neutralize so that no more acid is left because acid and cellulose or cotton together is a dangerous combination particularly when you dry because the concentration keeps on increasing. And so, at a concentrated, the acid becomes concentrated, there is a degradation happening. So, it is a very interesting process. What it does? It makes, gives stiffness definitely, which is relatively more permanent and almost like a translucent effect also is seen on the fabrics. And therefore, organdy, particularly for sarees and so on and so forth, or even. Uh, shirts 
people used to like it. But it's a fine fabric, twisted fabric, a twisted yarn, highly twisted yarn, not, not, not so much twisted that it becomes a crepe, but it's fine yarn. Why did this happen? Why did it happen? What do you think has happened? Sulfuric acid. So obviously, in the short period, the sulfuric acid is going to act on the surface. Okay? If it acts on a surface, then what happens? Some of the cellulose may dissolve, but it does not get a time to get out into solution. And the moment you put it in the washing liquor, this so called soluble cellulose, which may have broken down to relatively smaller molecules, but still very long molecules, immediately coagulate back. And if you see this happening, so cellulose is binding cellulose itself. So, you have a solution of a cellulose, maybe a little jelly. And then, if you can also calendar at the same time, which will be quite difficult, but if you do that, then it will be a very nice sheet of cotton coming out be very stiff, translucent, almost permanent. Very interesting. But of course, if you falter somewhere in the treatment time or increase temperatures, you may not see your fabric at all. So now we have some processes for applying stiff finishes. So how do we do? Padding. You know everything about padding? You take starch solutions, pad it, dry it, and you are done. So, all temporary finishes up to drying can be done. In case you want to do permanent finish, you will have to go up to the curing, right? Coating, coating means this is a textile and something on top has come. So the coating means, padding means everything goes inside from both sides in the interstices between the fibers, between the yarn and then it dries up or gets cross linked. But in the case of coating only on one side. If you have a knife on air type of situation, which means basically a knife, the fabric touches this and goes, and here you have a solution of the polymer which you want to coat and after coating you get knife on air because it the knife touches so after the fabric there is air that is that is the way the terminology is there so very thin coating can be obtained and based on the viscosity that means the how much solids were there the amount of such material applied could be very small and so you can control the stiffness in this way and of course, the chemistry if it is required. Lamination, the example of the two page, three papers that I showed you was a kind of a lamination. So, what you are looking at is you bind the two fabrics okay? and how do you bind the fabrics? So, you can use films which could be let us say thermoplastic films. or resins which are thermoplastic or otherwise. Or thermoset, and so what you do? You 
coat. The fabric, one fabric goes like this. Then you coat. and the second fabric meets, you have a nip. So there is binding happening. If you do drying and curing, whatever is suitable. So glues, resins could be used or you can use film. One fabric comes like this fabric 1, the fabric 2, and in between if there is a film, let us say this film is taken like this and heated in a hot calendaring system, fusing takes place. So if two layers the fabric get fused, so binding occurs and this is called lamination and you can get very stiff material. If you have more than one layer, it can become much more stiffer. And so thermoplastic or thermoset, whatever you use, you can do effective lamination. Well, we know how to measure stiffness. So there is bending length you had learned before also. So the same thing can be used to measure the stiffness. So what will happen? If the fabric becomes stiff, what will happen to the bending length? What will happen to the bending length if the fabric becomes stiff? It will increase. So there are other Kawabata based instruments which are called KESF2 can also be used to measure the stiffness of the fabrics which you can read yourself or maybe you have already read in your textile testing and characterization. So what do we do? Where do we use them? One is the aesthetics. Like I said, sarees can be made temporarily or permanently stiffer. Some people like stiff fabrics and therefore you like them. Cotton shirts, you want to wear cotton and you want stiff. So this is the way. So this is the aesthetic aspects of it. Then the collars and cuffs probably need a little stiffness and so you may use them at that places decorative products that you want to make of textiles which can have a shape of one type or the other. Let us say lampshades and so on and so forth, people may like to have stiff material so it does not become limpy as it is being used. Uh, wall coverings which do not require flexibility so much can absorb sound, can do good decoration and feel, they can use them. Emboss products where the shape of the embossed design impression also you want to make it permanent. So you can have uh, relatively uh, cross-linking based resins which can give permanency also whether you coat it on one side or you make a laminate and then emboss, doesn't really matter, it will take the shape that you want, desired shape. So you have some applications which are interesting. So why don't you uh, actually do something at your own end? Take two fabrics, put a polythene sheet in between, take a good hot iron, give enough time and temperature so that the polythene which is a low melting point uh, actually fuses. If it is a cotton fabric, so you will see bonding happens. You can go and check its stiffness. You can also have more layers and then see what happens as the thickness increases, what happens. Check it yourself and feel it. Now permanency, washability, durability, etc. would depend on how nice the fusing has taken place. This is an example of lamination. Otherwise, you know, take starch solution, pad any fabric through this, 
stretch and dry, you will get stiff material. So, what have we done? Today, we have spent some time on looking at mechanisms, uh, how stiffness can be imparted. We understand if you can just modify surfaces, make surface bonds, uh, things can change to your advantage in some sense increasing the friction between the two surfaces, fiber to fiber, yarn to yarn, fabric to fabric, temporarily or permanently. So, methods we have seen some chemicals which we have talked about, but these are not only chemicals. Theoretically, it is so simple you can add any polymer, it will make things stiff if you like both things. Well, uh, after this, next time when we meet, we will talk about softening treatment, how to make the fabric softer, which is obviously opposite to what we talked about called the stiffness. All the best. Thank you.